Hello again, this is the professor. As you might have noticed, I did not have an intro in this video. Now that is because I'm actually taking the criticism I did get from Loudon and his CUR he did of me, and I'm going to be rethinking the intro I am using for my commentaries. So yeah, with that aside, I am going to be trying to work on some of the things he talked about and try to improve myself so as next time I won't have a C+. Plus! And, you know, he won't put me on the same level as the filler people on that guy with the glasses! Alright, Josiah, let's all put our hands together today for a second degree commentary! You know, we all love those almost as much as fifth degree commentaries, don't we? Today we will be looking at a commentator who I really think needs a lot of work. You might be wondering who this is. Well, he is none other than the all-powerful Too Funny Version 4. I know, I know, you're all wondering why I am also going to go after this guy. Well, I personally think he is a mockery to commentators at this point. He does have the chance to improve if he takes some advice in the form of a not-so-constructive criticism commentary. But let us go ahead and dive into his commentary on Game Dude's review of the Conquer games. in Sony Vegas! Or, no, wait, this looks a little bit more like Movie Maker. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Too Funny Version 4 here with my badass Bender t-shirt and welcome to another episode of Too Funny Commentaries. Now in this one, I'm going to be doing a commentary on someone who I should have commented on during February. Then why didn't you? That is the Game Dude. I really thought the Game Dude was irrelevant at this point. Actually he is. And, well, he's just fun to rip on. So, I'm going to do a commentary on his Conquer review. Why? Because Conker makes me laugh. So then his review wasn't bad, you just enjoy the game and this is why you're going to make your commentary. That really doesn't make much sense. Why are you going to make a commentary just because you like a game? Maybe if you disagree with the review that you're watching, then I can understand. But the only reason you gave us is because you like the game. And I'm going to assume that you like to hear yourself talk. Every single time I play Conker's Bad Fur Day, I just laugh so hard. So. Let's get on with the commentary. I've seen some intros in my time, but that one's got to be even worse than the than my first rant intro I made for two funny rants. I'm just saying. Well, your new intro is shorter, but it's not that much better than your previous ones. Wow, what a totally unplagiarized version of the Game Boy we got there. Actually, this is a pretty damn good effect, and a well-designed Game Boy, plus, it's not really plagiarism. Plagiarism means you have to completely and totally rip off the source material. He actually made some changes to this. Wait, am I defending Alexander? What the hell is wrong with me today? Some say Conquer now sucks. But I concur. And I will conquer. Conquer. Not funny. Plus not funny. Equals not fucking funny! If you want a joke to work, you need humor. Don't you know that? Okay, everyone, I'm going to start a count of media clips used by Too Funny. So we are now at one. As everyone should know, I think you should keep the use of media clips to a minimum. 
Using a large number of these will actually distract from your commentary and makes it seem like you can't come up with an argument yourself and have to resort to using other people to make your points and jokes. I really think that you should speak for yourself and not overuse media clips and commentaries. Concurse, fuck it fails. Good gravy game dude, do you even know how unfunny that sounded? A game for everyone that does not work. Game dude, have you ever played Diddy Kong Racing? Because that's a game for everyone, and Conker's in that. So, yeah, I played it, I think it's fun. Loads of fun if you ask me. I haven't beaten it, but still fun. I think you missed the point of his statement. He was stating that it was a game meant for everyone, but nobody will like it. Not that he thinks Conquer should not be at a game that is rated E. Maybe if you listen a little closer next time, you can understand what he's saying. Even though it has nice music and wonderful graphics for Game Boy excluding the barn, it still fucking smells. He moves so slow, you might as well keep running, but then enemies everywhere come out of nowhere. They're so cheap and awkward to dodge because they're so big, fast, and the roots are so narrow. They take so long to die by slingshot, and because there's not enough rocks around, you'll almost always be defenseless. I myself haven't played Conker's Pocket Tales, and I too would be, it would be in a situation like that, but I would at least try to find a way to deal with those enemies, instead of complain about them, like what you're doing. There are two major issues with that statement. First off, you stated that you never played the game, which means you are ill-equipped and ill-informed to defend the game correctly. Two, if I remember correctly, your only real means of defense was the slingshot. So if you happen to run out of ammo, then there is no way to defend yourself. So attempting to do so would be fruitless. I really don't like having to defend the game, dude for the sole fact that it goes against everything I stand for. The worst are these fuck noggins. Damn it! You can never dodge fast enough, even when you follow a certain pattern. You keep firing diagonally away as you try to dodge. Alright, that's it. Finally! What? They immediately regenerate? Fuck! I can understand the respawning of enemies and how bad it is, but, some, but in some games like Banjo-Tooie, sometimes when the enemies respawn, if you kill them again, they leave an item behind, in this case a honeycomb in banjo Tilly. So, so what you just said means nothing to me. Oh, it's all well and good that the enemies in banjo Tooie drop items when defeated, but you do know that not all games work this way. Let's just say, for example, that in this game, the enemies you kill don't drop anything. So, them respawning immediately is nothing more than annoyance, and a hindrance seeing as there is no real reward for having to kill them again. You know, other than wasting the ammo that you need to defend yourself. What's the point of this anyway? You don't score points or anything, you just die. That's bullshit. Indeed it is, Angry Video Game Nerd. Indeed it is. Do you care to explain exactly how this is bullshit with your vast knowledge of the game? Oh wait, I forgot! You've never played this, so you have no idea what you're talking about. Might as well try to avoid them. Great, now what do I do? Fuck! This is all very odd because everything else is too fucking easy. That's Rich coming from someone who keeps complaining about the difficulty. Like the puzzles are too simple, moving boxes at the right order, unlocking doors, and being a delivery squirrel. That's basically it. You know, Rare hasn't made that many shitty games, so I'd like to think of this game as a rare piece of shit. That right there is the main reason why Game Dude is unenjoyable. His jokes are unpredictable and boring as all can be. In fact, so boring, I think Cody has something to say to the Game Dude. Take it away, Cody. You're boring the crap out of me. You know, that right there is the issue with Too Funny. He can't make a joke himself, so he has to resort to media clips to make his jokes for him. And also, the deeper we get into the commentary, the more and more he reminds me of Shadowstar1224. Oh, that's right, just when he thought the monotone was gone, from hell came the new master of monotone, Too Funny version 4. Sent by Shadowstar with the mission to never let his monotone legacy die. 
Control is also awkward, and there's not enough acorns to heal damage, so dying is easy, and if you die, it takes 10 hours before you can replay the game. That's bullshit, it doesn't take that long. You're probably just exaggerating. Well, no shit, Sherlock, what was your first clue? Beginning. Every time you die, this happens. You know, you could have at least edited that part out just to save me the boredom. Yes! What is the purpose of showing proof to back up a claim that you are making? Hurry up. Don't you worry, game dude. I'll save you. Captain Monitor away! Ah, since he's not gonna edit the bits out, I'm gonna do it for him. Every time you enter a text box, the music annoyingly restarts. Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to count this as a media clip as well, because I can! <laughs> Plus, let's go ahead and start a second counter for apparently pointless statements. There's so many invisible walls, it's like getting lost in an invisible maze, and the perspective is an illusion. Good gravy, game dude. You can't go for about a second and a half without complaining about invisible walls. Well, let's see, this is the first time they were mentioned in the video, but maybe you were exaggerating. Do you see how stupid that sounds? And even if, and like Shad Souls 11 said, if that invisible wall wasn't there, you would still bitch. Or was it the other way around? Oh, I don't know. So Shad Souls 11, if you're watching this, correct me on it, will ya? You know what would have been a better idea? Double checking to make sure that your quote was correct in the first place. And then you wouldn't have had to do this whole screw up. And even if you did screw up, you could have deleted it and replaced it with the correct quote. You could have edited that out of your video, you know? Like, how are tree branches above me going to block me? It's called an overhead view. Glitches are everywhere. Like when you move diagonally against trees, he grows a second tail. Why did you put tails as a subliminal message? Well, let's see here. He said that Conquer will get a second tail due to a glitch that's within the game. And he was apparently using Tails from Sonic as a comparison, or maybe a joke. I'm just asking. They couldn't even give him a diagonal sprite. You're always lost because there's no map. Keep getting stuck. Gameplay is just bland. It's the same thing over and over again. Aren't all games like that? No. Usually with a good game is made, they do something to spice up the game despite the core elements being the same across the board so as the game does not get boring or old. You know, like increasing the difficulty, adding attacks that you could perform, giving you new weapons, and so on. Well, most of them anyway. Well, from a gameplay perspective. Aimless wandering. Conqueror's bad for a day. Don't be deceived by Conqueror's kitty luck. Now he's badass, and this is not a kid's game. Well, no fucking shit, Sherlock. It was going to be, but was replaced with this. What a nutty pile of fucker. Have both. I don't think so, matey. Maybe you could have talked about how making Conqueror into a game that was meant for children and adults at the same time would not have worked, instead of going all monotone pirate on his ass. Feels like Disney. In a way, it does. Whoa, settle down, boy. Stop bothering the tree. Now put your nuts away. Stop calling me Squirrel Boy! <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry, but I was forced to use that! Did someone have a gun to your head? Plus, that joke made absolutely no sense in context to what he was saying. He made a lame joke about Conker humping a tree, and you told him to stop calling you Squirrel Boy. You care to explain the connection and logic behind this? That was bad. I think you're bad enough, as it is, game dude. Nevertheless, with beautiful graphics, precise control, charmingly delightful music, and witty, uncensored humor, this game is amazing. Elaboration, motherfucker! Do you use it? 
Ripping off Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction just like a lot of other idiots on YouTube are. Do you really think that hearing this exact same joke used for the 1,000th time still makes it funny? You also get drunk, piss, and go to shit mountain. What more needs to be said? Coming from you, I don't think you need to say any more at all. You know, Conker, Dixie, and Tails would make an awesome team. Conker's other bad fur day, what could have been an awesome game, was cancelled. <laughs> That's because Rareware didn't even have that idea in their heads. Do some fucking research, you dolt! Look at this statement from Conquer.Wikia.com. After the release of Conquer's Bad Fur Day, Rare, and let me emphasize the word Rare, began production on a new game initially named Conquer's Other Bad Fur Day. Do better fucking research, you dolt! When Nintendo sold Rare to Microsoft and was replaced with Conquer Live and Reloaded, a bad, bad fur day port. Conquer's classic look is so deceivingly awesome. You'd never expect a squirrel so cute and adorable to be so badass. And you still did not elaborate on why Conquer's personality suits him. I think he was trying more to get across the point that his personality did not suit the design which was part of the charm of the character. But they ruined him. Now he looks like a hairy shitball wedged inside a squirrel's anus. They tried to make an already badass icon, badass for Xbox, but instead made him bad and ass. I agree, and he is about to speak. I am sure of that. Oh my god, the failure is too much for me to handle! Oh my god, no! You care to explain why you made that statement? You keep yelling at Game Dude to explain things, and yet you fail to do so yourself. HYPOCRITE! Graphics are technically superior, but they replace the cartoon graphics with ugly, washed out, more realistic ones. And if there's one thing I can't stand, it's people like you who complain about the graphics for no reason at all. And as we all know, graphics don't make a game. Gameplay does. But, oh, wait, you never figured that out, didn't you? How dare he have a preference for the graphics in the original game? How dare you, game dude! Stop having an opinion on an aspect of a game despite the fact that you will attempt to critique other aspects of the game as well. Now without any charm, personality, crisp design, and a lot of the good cinematic framing of the classic, the great Mighty Pooh now looks like shit because now he doesn't look like shit. Does to me. Font also now looks like shit, and voice balloons aren't as readable. A lot of the animation is gone, and what remains now retains far less than wrong emotion. Like, Conker here looks like an evil genius, but here, he looks like a spoiled brat. And why does he now hold a holy grail? The glass of milk parodied a clockwork orange. <laughs> Maybe you should go watch Stan Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, quite possibly his best work ever, and then you will understand the reference. Oh wait, almost forgot to put this out there. HOW DARE GAME TO POINT OUT A CLEVER REFERENCE IN A GAME! They ruined the entire scene and destroyed its meaning of existence. Game Dude, that was uncalled for! Just all the, all that complaining over just that one little scene that just got, that just got edited because it didn't match the original? Are you fucking kidding me? No, it was more of a complaint about how they removed a reference that was made in the original that was removed from the second without replacing that reference with the new one. You see, the original Conker's Bad Fur Day was a game based on spoofing and satirical comedy off of pop culture and by removing this little reference, they remove part of the soul of this game. I mean, come on, granted it does look bad by your standards, but to me it looks kind of cool! Oh my good god! This guy is unfucking believable Well said, Christopher Walken. It had to be done. And no, it Bastards. didn't. 
Conker now only has one gun instead of two. Fuck this garbage. Damn it, Rare. Why did you have to leave Nintendo? Well, it says here, according to an article on Wikipedia, Microsoft, in 2002, paid 375 million US dollars for 100% acquisition of Rareware, a record for a video game developer. As a result, Rare is now a subsidiary part of Microsoft. That really doesn't explain why they made the choice to accept the deal. Just that there was a deal made. Next time, explain why if you're trying to counteract him on this. So that's why they left. Microsoft paid Rareware to be part of them. Now, don't you get that now? Game now takes a lot longer to load, which makes sense because the original was cartridge based, but it's still annoying. Conker's arm floats are now gone, cartoon blood is now realistic, deleted classic parts like the eel sequence, cutscenes are a bit choppy with non synchronized audio. Some cutscenes aren't as funny, like they removed Conker's priceless face when the gargoyle fell off the bridge. Now when you use your weapon, you go to this third person perspective. It's unnecessary, awkward, disorienting, and I don't like it. To be honest with you, it actually looks kinda helpful. I mean, think about this for a minute. If you're playing the original Conker's Bad Fairly on the N64 and you're trying to pick up something by hitting it with a pan, it doesn't zoom in, but on the Live and Reloaded version, it zooms in and it helps you more, so, yeah, it's actually somewhat better. You now use a bat instead of a frying pan, which was funnier because it was sillier. They censored most of the swearing because obviously, Xbox is for kiddies and Nintendo is for adults. You know, for some reason, guys, I'm gonna have to agree with Game Dude on this one because there have been some adult games for the for Nintendo consoles, like Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, and Eternal Darkness, another GameCube hit. And there's even no more heroes, one and two, which is which are like rated which is like rated sixteen or fifteen over here in Britain, and they're for the Wii. And now what am I saying? In, in, what am I saying? Nintendo is going to be more more hardcore than Sony and Microsoft once they get the Wii U out. Okay, that sounded a bit wrong. In terms of what is it? Now let's move on. Nintendo Fanboy Ahoy! You could have edited that last part out! You do know this, right? It doesn't even play the same, and is now filled with many bugs. Control is now awkward, and Conker slides when he stops like he's on ice. The now awkward camera can't zoom in or out except when Conker gets near a wall. Then it zooms into the back of Conker's head, a real pain in the ass. Stop it! Online sucks, the level design is incredibly stale, badly designed, and the convoluted and messy control is worse than single player. Like almost everything else, it's better on the 64. This game is more depressing than watching a murder of murdering crows getting murdered, and a disgrace to the squirrel's legacy. Game Dude, how many times are you going to say that? That phrase is starting to grow a grey beard. Besides, how can a video game character have a legacy? Well, of course they do. Link, Mario, Samus, Master Chief, Kratos, they all have a legacy. Plus, your constant reusing video clips are starting to grow a beard as well. Oh wait, maybe they do. <laughs> Show your next. And that, my friends, is where the video ended. So oh, did it really? Overall. Well, he's a piss poor excuse of a video game reviewer. He fails at elaboration. His jokes are absolutely boring and unpredictable. And he doesn't even know. He doesn't even get his research correct. What do you think, Dr. Martin Semper? We do not want this sickness. This is sick. And it's therefore deviant, we do not want it. Exactly. And what did you think of Game Dude's video, Wayne? It certainly does suck. My thoughts exactly. And what did you think of Game Dude's review, Michael J. Fox? He's an asshole. Could have said it better myself. Also, also, Game Dude. 
Get this. I think that Stephen the Freak Out Kid has something to say to you. Take it away, Stephen. I will freaking find you and I will kill you! Also, I think your hero, the angry video game nerd, has something to say to you. Take it away, nerd. Ain't you a goddamn fucking piece of shit? Also, I think Shuma Gorath has something to say to you. Take it away, Shuma Gorath. You are no Doctor Strange, mortal! And finally, Shao Kahn has something to say to you. Take it away, Shao Kahn. It's official. You suck. Yeah, it's official. You heard the man. So until next time, this is Too Funny Version 4, signing out. Why is it that every one of Too Funny's commentaries seems to end like this? At least the ones that I've watched have all ended in a very similar fashion. Well, seeing as he gave his personal opinion on Game Dude at the end of this video, let me give my personal opinion on Too Funny. Too Funny is a horrible commentator. His points make no sense, his scripting is atrocious, his editing skills are horrific, the overuse of media clips, did you really need seven media clips right at the very end, is annoying to no end. He is just as monotone as Shadowstar 1224. He needs to do valid research before criticizing other people's research. He needs to learn to play a game before defending it or bashing it. And his jokes are misused and do not work with the context where he makes them. Though I do have to agree that, yeah, Game Dude does suck at reviewing. I could have done commentary in his review at the same time, saying it's too funny, missed a lot of points that could have been commentated on, at least as far as I'm concerned. But I figured that's old and tired. You know, making Game Dude commentaries, especially on his old reviews and whatnot, it's getting old and tired. You know, Game Dude's pretty much a dead subject unless he actually starts making new reviews. But I have to ask, M Skull, what do you think? Oh wait, never mind. I'm not stooping to that level. This is the professor saying I will see you ladies and gents on a later date. And adieu.